and welcome back to my YouTube channel everyone. Today I am going to be reviewing Avengers Infinity War. Uh, this is my spoiler review, so just to be clear, if you have not seen this movie, do not watch this review yet. Come back later. You don't want to know. Trust me, you don't want to know. This is going to be a crazy movie to talk about and I'm very excited, so let's get right to it. First things first, uh, did I like this movie? Yes, I did like this movie. Thanks for asking. I loved this movie. In fact, I'm seeing it again in three hours. So, hope that answers that question. Um, not gonna linger on that. Uh, this was the craziest movie going experience I have ever had. I was at the first showing on Thursday night, surrounded by Marvel fans. There was someone in a Spider-Man outfit doing backflips. It was like crazy. We got there two hours early because there's not reserved seating at this theater. And everyone was screaming and crying and shouting. And I, at some points, just like shouted no. And my roommate, Catherine, like jumped out of her seat at one point. And it was just, <laughs> it was such a fun experience. Um, and it was absolutely insane. I strongly suggest seeing movies on opening night if you can, uh, and especially movies that are Marvel movies, um, maybe DC movies, Star Wars movies, stuff like that. There's so much fun on opening night, There's so much fun. Um, and I mean, perfect segue, I guess, talking about the movie, let's just get started with that opening. Man, I mean, everyone in my in my theater just went, Oh my god, like we all just like had a collective gasp when there was no music over the opening Marvel logo. That was very concerning. We knew we were in for something. Um, and, ooh, it was that, that start and then it cut to black and the stress call, oh my goodness, that, oh, it was so unlike anything Marvel's done before and I, loved it. I love how out of the box Marvel is becoming. It's so refreshing and fun and oh it was it was so it was such a strong opening. Such a strong opening and I was so worried. I was so worried this film wouldn't live up to my very high expectations but I knew that it was taking itself seriously from from the opening of the film. Um, and Speaking of the opening of the film, uh, Loki and Heimdall, uh, I would like to say I totally called Loki. I, I mean, I almost made a video about it. I didn't because I honestly just, that was the only one I was sure about. And I, I don't know, I, I just, and I didn't want to think about the movie anymore. I didn't want to think about the deaths. It was actually overwhelming me. Uh, but I just knew, I had this gut feeling that Loki was going to die. Um, especially with the way Tom Hiddleston was answering all his questions on the press tour. I was like, this is the type of answer that you would give if you were, this was your last press tour with Marvel. Like, I could tell. And this, to me, Loki's death was the hardest one to watch. The hardest one to watch. It wasn't the saddest to me, but it was the hardest one to watch. And frankly, I'm not looking forward to watching that part again tonight. I'm, I'm just not. It was... It was hard knowing that a character that's evaded death so much, knowing that he is actually dead this time, and I, I do believe he will stay dead, um, that was hard. That was, it was hard to watch. It was hard to watch Thor's reaction. Um, but I do love how he finally kind of became, he kind of made that final decision. Like, this is, I'm going to risk my life fighting for the good side. I, I really liked that. Um, and on the same note of that opening scene, Heimdall, that was, I mean, I loved that he died being a hero. It makes me so sad that Idris Elba couldn't have like a bigger role in the Marvel universe, even though Heimdall is very important. Um, but I liked that he, he kind of sacrificed himself to get Hulk back to warn people. That was, that was really nice. Um, 
And I guess sticking on the topic of death, because that's basically just what this movie was, was death, 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 death. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Gamora. Wow. I knew that she was going to be in danger. I knew that she was going to play a big part in this movie, but did I think she was going to die? And did I think she was going to die in the way she did with Thanos loving her and sacrificing her? No. But when they, when they were going to get the soul stone and she was with Thanos, I, I just knew. I knew it then. And I was, and I was actually, I didn't think, I was, I was wondering if Marvel had the guts to do it, if the Russo brothers had the guts to do it, and they did. They went there. They pushed Gamora off a cliff. And I really, on that same note, I actually really liked the way the Soul Stone was um, portrayed in this movie, how you have to sacrifice, you have to lose a soul to gain the stone. Um, I thought that was very beautiful, very meta, uh, just good. I, I thought it was very beautiful. Uh, and yeah, um, I, that was a very hard death for me to watch. Uh, I thought Nebula was more likely to die than I thought Gamora was likely to die, but it happened and I think she's going to stay dead. Uh, but what do you guys think? Let me know below. Um, moving on to Vision, another character that I believe will stay dead. You think Gamora's gonna stay dead? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. You don't think no. she's going to stay dead? No, I don't think she's going to stay dead. <laughs> We're going to talk about Vision now. <laughs> he died twice. Did you really ha Ah, Marvel. You got me. I did not see that coming with the time stone. I did not see that coming. I forgot it was a possibility. And then they did the whole Apple thing from Doctor Strange to Vision. And that was so hard to watch. We had to watch him die twice as if it wasn't hard enough to watch the tragedy of Scarlet Witch, someone who loves him, who we ex we explored that romance earlier in the movie, to see to see her have to do it, that was so sad. And then it was over, and it was terrifyingly, it was just, it was brutal. And then he gets brought back to life, and it gets ripped out of his head, and oh, that was hard, especially because I love Vision, especially in this movie, too. I... The more I see Vision, the more I grow to love him. And I loved him to begin with. But um, he's just such an awesome character. He's so interesting, so wise. And it'll be sad to be without him. I hope they can bring him back. I truly do. I don't know if they will. But man, that man. And I, and I do wonder if Shuri finished. Because it looked like she did. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but moving on to the other deaths deaths. These are definitely not permanent. Uh, I would like to emphasize that. If any of you are worried, these people, I believe, are the ones that are actually safe in Avengers 4 because everyone else is going to be at risk of dying because these people are going to be brought back. We know that Spider-Man has another movie. We know that the Guardians are going to have another movie. We have, we know Black Panther, they would never kill him off after what just happened with his movie. Um, and the fact that he's a new character in general as well. Uh, there's no way they're killing off Doctor Strange. He's highly important. Uh, Bucky, all of them, none, none of them are gone. Um, let me just list them off. Scarlet Witch, Falcon, T'Challa, Mantis, Groot, Drax, Star-Lord, Bucky Barnes, and Peter Parker. Um, heartbreaking. When Bucky Barnes disappeared, because for a second, I was wondering if the snap actually did anything. Because I thought the second he snapped, everyone would just go, Psh but it was much more gradual, and I like the way they did that. It wasn't everyone just starts fading at the same time. It was like one by one, which I personally very much liked. Um, and we could spend a, a moment with each character. Uh, it was hard to watch Scarlet Witch go after what just happened with um, with Vision. I thought Falcon, the T'Challa vanishing was huge for my theater. Um, Groot was also, that elicited a big response. Star-Lord, Drax, Mantis, Falcon, th there's, their moments were cut a little bit short. Bucky had a big gasp because it, he was the first one to go. I didn't know how to feel about Steve's reaction, but, I mean, he was very shocked and I could understand why. Uh, but truly, 
the saddest death in the movie and the hardest one for everyone in my theater at least and for me was Peter Parker as Spider-Man um that was that just that was gut-wrenching and then just saying like I don't want to go I don't want to go Mr. Stark please please I don't want to go like sobbing in Tony's arms that was just uh guys there were like I just heard tears everywhere around me that broke my heart it, it, all the friends that I went with, it's, they said they agreed that that was the saddest part. Um, it was... It, t Tom Holland's, I commend him, because that was such a short moment. But the Russo brothers very purposefully stretched it out the longest of all the deaths, um, of all the disappearances. And just the fact that he's a kid... And it just the lines, the things he said, it was just, it was hard. And it, of all of the disappearances, that one hit the hardest in terms of like, wow, this is, this is how, like, people are gone and they feel it. And well, at least Peter Parker feels it probably due to his spider sense. Um, in addition to it, however it may feel, um, but it just, it, oh. They had the guts. They had the guts to kill off Spider-Man, Black Panther, Star-Lord, all of them. Oh my god. Ah. But that part killed me. That part killed me. Um, moving on to the people who did the killing. Um, the Black Order. Wow. Even though the voice actors turned out to be relatively unknown people. I thought they were very interesting. I thought they looked great visually. I would have to say that Ebony Ma and Proxima Midnight were my two favorites. Um, they had the most, they had the most screen time as well and they looked the most threatening. And I think they looked the best as well. And they were definitely, yeah, they were the most intimidating. But as far as the Black Order goes, I'm disappointed that they died so quickly. In terms of the way they died, I thought they didn't feel like cheap deaths. They felt like the characters really struggled to get them to that point. That was, I mean, they felt rewarding every time it happened. I just wish that we could get more of them in the next movie as well, but the Avengers have enough to deal with, so I'll let it slide, but it, that's probably my one criticism of the movie is that they definitely, I don't know, I just really liked those characters and I wish we could see more of them, but they're gone. Um, moving on to, I'm just going to go with the, the MVPs, my, my personal character MVPs for the movie. I would say Thanos is a brilliant villain. In my opinion, he's one of the best Marvel villains there have been. I need to see the movie more before I say he is the best, but man, that, that guy, that purple thumb grape dude is just powerful. He literally got stabbed in the chest with Thor's axe. And Thanos scared me so badly. <laughs> he was so entertaining to watch. The first time he moved, I was a little iffy, not sure how to feel about it. But the more he moved, I got used to it, seeing him cry feeling his emotions. Josh Brolin did so well with the mocap and with the voice acting especially. And overall I thought he was pretty well developed. I mean given the fact that the Russo brothers had to cut out his his backstory, uh, I think they did a pretty good job of explaining his character and his motives. He didn't feel like a weak villain to me and I have to applaud them for that. I think the movie was very effective in showing both sides of the story. This was definitely Thanos' movie. He by far had the most screen time. Um, and you just, you just knew, you just, you just saw the threat, you know, like, like it's so easy to, to know that the, that the villain won't succeed in a movie, you know, it, it's, it's so easy to know. But with Infinity War, the whole time, all I could think about was it's so easy for the heroes to lose and I loved that I loved how different it was me not knowing truly 
what was going to happen in the end. The typical three-act structure of the, the, the resolution being being positive, a good ending, a, a happy ending, which is so common for Disney movies. It, it just, it was so not that. The ending was so not happy. And I loved it. It was so, I was so on the edge of my seat the entire time. Also, I had to pee the entire length of the movie. Yes, I went 10 minutes before it started. 20 minutes in, I had to pee again. I had to hold it the entire time. But I just, I was so scared. I could not get up and leave. And I did not want to miss a second of the movie. Um, but I, I thought Thanos was handled very well. Let me know below what you guys think about Thanos because I look forward to seeing more of him in Avengers 4 and that smile on the end, the, at the end that he gives that just like pleased, ugh. And he loved Gamora. And speaking of Gamora, Gamora, oh, her telling, Pe her telling Peter Quill to kill her, that's just, it's just heartbreaking. I loved seeing her backstory. I loved her more in this movie than I ever have before. Um, not that I didn't love her before, but I, ooh, she's, ugh, I'm gonna miss her. I hope she, I, part of me wants her to come back, part of me doesn't, um, but Again, I thought she had a very important role in this movie, and I thought she was great. She definitely an MVP, knocked it out of the park, A+. Plus. Moving on to, and I'm just going to talk about them together, Scarlet Witch and Vision. First of all, Scarlet Witch's powers in this movie, she's gotten so good at using them. I love her in this movie more than I've ever loved her before. I actually didn't really like her that much, and it, like sometimes, some scenes I like her, and other scenes I don't. Um, but in this movie, and first of all, her hair was much better in this movie as well. Uh, and I think her accent's gone as well. But, oh, I, let me know what you guys think. But I personally loved Scarlet Witch a lot more in this movie. And I loved her relationship with Vision. And I love how they made each other feel more human. And they, it's just, oh, so good. And I've already talked about Vision, but those were two more of my MVPs. So they, they pretty much go hand in hand. Um, next, Doctor Strange, for obvious reasons, if you have seen this movie. Wow, he he knocked it out of the park. Watching him do his magic, and Wong as well. Um, so powerful, so, I just love the movie Doctor Strange so much. And I love that he's a character in the MCU now because just all the things he got to do, all the possibilities that are there in fight scenes when he's with them, um, his, his, his wise, all-knowing kind of thing is this was the only way, this was the only outcome, Tony. And, and, and him going from, I'm not going to save you or Peter, I'm going to protect the Time Stone, to him giving up the Time Stone to save Tony. Like, what a, what a little arc right there. Oh, <laughs> oh, I just, oh, and he did, Benedict Cumberbatch did so well, it was so great. And Doctor Strange is another MVP. Moving on to Spider-Man. Spider-Man, my favorite hero. Uh, the Iron Spider legs were so good and the pop culture references were golden. I loved it. And then, uh, of course, I talked about the death. It, it, it just, it was so... I love the way the Russo brothers handled Spider-Man, personally. Uh, but, And I love the way that John Watts handled him as well in Spider-Man Homecoming. But I, I just... Uh, I, uh, and I can so relate to constantly comparing everything to, to movies. And so uh, I, I just won't get sick of it. But the Iron Spider legs looked so cool. And I was so worried about them. Because I actually thought they looked a little tacky in the comics sometimes. Depending on how they were used. But I, I trusted Marvel. And I am happy that I did. Because... They were awesome. And I loved, and there was this one shot of Spider-Man and he like goes up and he's like, has his legs like point like together um, and his arms like that and he's like flying through the air and then all the legs are bent and he looks like a real spider just going, Whoosh. oh, it makes me so happy. <laughs> it makes me so happy when it's like, just like the comics. Oh, so good. Oh, so good. Mm. Okay. Yes, 
yes, I'm very excited about the Iron Spider suit. I thought it looked really cool. Um, moving on to uh, one of the top MVPs, and with the one with the second most amount of screen time, Thor. Wow. Thor. I love him. He's officially one of my favorite characters. I mean, that when he comes down with the lightning and uh, Stormbreaker, and he just, like, guts Thanos. And then when he shows up, and then the thing with Captain America, and, and like, I see you cut your hair, or I see you cut your hair, I see you stole my facial hair, or something like that. Oh, it was so funny. And I love the comedy route with him, too, but also, I mean, the drama with Thor in this movie, the, the part where he says, if I die, like, I, and Ro Rocket's like, if you die, then, and he's like, I have nothing else to lose, like, I have... He, he literally has lost pretty much everyone in his life, and it's just so heartbreaking, and he keeps fighting as hard as he can, and it just, it just breaks my heart, um, but he just, he just looks so cool when he fights, and I, and I love that he has another weapon now, it looks so good, love that Groot helped him make it, um, and yeah, so Thor, another MVP, he was great, and... On the same note, actually, because Thor is a perfect segue to this topic, comedy versus drama in this movie. I thought it was perfectly well balanced. And I'm not saying that, and I, you guys can trust me, because I know I've talked about how I thought, like, Doctor Strange is the perfect balance, and a lot of you disagree with that. But this truly was a perfect balance, because... <laughs> and I was very worried about this. I was afraid the movie, and I talked about this in my non-spoiler review, that it was just going to go up, 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 and he would never stop. And that, you can't watch movies like that. You can't make movies like that. It, you need to give your audience a break. And the comedy, in my opinion, was perfectly inserted into moments when I really needed to breathe. And I was very clenched, and I was sitting like this, or like this, and it just gave me a moment to, like, relax and laugh. And every time it happened, I was grateful for it. So... In my opinion, that's perfect. This is a perfect sprinkling of comedy for me. And it was by no means a comedy or like Thor Ragnarok or like a funny or Ant-Man or just a funny movie. It was, it was, and Thor Ragnarok is not a comedy, but it, it had much more comedy than this. And, um, it, it was, this was a very like hard to watch, intense, brutal movie and where there was comedy, it was perfect. Something that added to that drama though, by the way, the score. If you have not listened to this score, I strongly recommend it. The Wakanda theme played, that was so cool. Every time the Avengers theme played, I went ballistic. Uh, but the score was beautiful with the orchestra and it sounds a lot like a Game of Thrones score, not gonna lie. And I love that. It sounds ex the the song Porch, which is from the end where Thanos is kind of looking out at um, at the sunset over the galaxy. It sounds so much like Winter Has Come from season six of Game of Thrones. It's actually crazy. But, like, just, like, one, like, one, like, ten second snippet of it, it and I just, it, res it just, like, whew. the emotions that it brings about for me as a Game of Thrones fan, it's like, wow, the feeling I had when, no spoilers for Game of Thrones, but the feeling I had when that song played in season six is the feeling that Thanos has at the end of Infinity War. Like, that, like I could make that connection, and I don't know. It was definitely not done on purpose, but it... Whew, that was intense. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, other. I'm just going to wrap this up soon, but and other things that are notable, Hulk uh, versus Banner. That was hilarious. Um, and I really thought... And the running shot. The running shot was not in the movie. And I kept waiting for it. And I was like, no, the Hulk is going to come out because the running shot. And the running shot wasn't in there. But it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. They need to stop doing that. And the last thing is the end credit scene. There was only one uh, after one did not... After the first one did not appear... Literally my entire theater started freaking out and someone that I went with, he was like, what if Thanos, what if Thanos erased the end credit scenes when he snapped his fingers? And then we were all like, uh, no, no, that's not allowed. And then I actually thought there was going to be no end credit scenes and that would have been, that would have been gutsy. But luckily, per usual, they gave us a nice little tease for Captain Marvel. That was very exciting. I'm so excited for that movie, and I am very, 
very excited for Avengers 4. I will make a video this weekend if I have time, uh, but it'll probably be Monday, talking about what to expect in Avengers 4. This, there is a lot to go over with this movie. It is huge. So let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of Infinity War. If you're going to go see it again like I am, I'm going to see it a couple more times. I'm very excited too. I'm going to see it. Finally, I'm going to get to see it in IMAX when I go home. There are no IMAX theaters within an hour of me. Um, but it's going to be great. It's going to be so great. And I am so excited to talk about this movie much more with you guys. Please leave comments down below. I really want to know what you think of this movie. Um, whose death was the most powerful for you? Did you expect certain things to happen? The fight scenes. I didn't even talk about the fight scenes. Oh, the fight scenes were so good. I should make a ranking video of the fight scenes. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a ranking video of the fight scenes because I will do that. Um, oh, it was so good. I could also make a video of me ranking the Infinity War characters too in terms of like their roles. If you want me to do that, let me know in the comments below and give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more content from me about Marvel, about all of that. It is going to be so much fun getting to discuss this movie with you, getting to discuss Ant-Man and the Wasp and Captain Marvel and Avengers 4. And it's also going to be fun talking about Deadpool, Solo, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, all the other summer movies that are about to come out. This is a good, good time to be a movie fan, guys. And I'm very excited to continue to watch this channel grow. So let's talk about it all together. Subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up, comment below, and I will see you guys later. Have a good day. 